Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense detected 26 Chinese military aircraft and 10 naval vessels around the island. 19 out of 26 Chinese military aircraft crossed the median line, which bisects the Taiwan Strait and separates the island from China. According to the Taiwan News, Taiwan also sent aircraft and naval ships and deployed coastal-based missile systems to monitor Chinese army activity in response to the Chinese move. The Taiwan Air Defense Identification Zone, declared unilaterally, covers an area of 492,000 square kilometers and considerably exceeds the island's airspace. It also spans the waters around it, the Taiwan Strait and part of the airspace over the Fujian, Jiangxi, and Zhejiang provinces in mainland China. Since September 2020, China has increased its use of gray zone tactics by incrementally increasing the number of military aircraft and naval ships operating around Taiwan. Gray zone tactics are defined as an effort or series of efforts beyond steady state deterrence and assurance that attempts to achieve one's security objectives without resort to direct and sizable use of force. Taiwan, so far this month, has tracked Chinese military aircraft 47 times and naval-slash-coast guard vessels 44 times in one month. NATO has two to three years to prepare for confrontation with Russia, Norway's top general. The head of the Norwegian Armed Forces, General Erik Christofferson, believes that the North Atlantic Alliance's window of opportunities to prepare for a possible confrontation with Russia has shrunk to two to three years. He said this in an interview with Bloomberg. Christofferson noted that NATO had previously given Russia up to 10 years to restore its military capabilities depleted by the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. At one point, someone said, it'll take 10 years, but I think we're back to less than 10 years because of the industrial base that is now running in Russia. It will take some time, which gives us a window now for the next two to three years to rebuild our forces, to rebuild our stocks at the same times as we are supporting Ukraine, Christofferson added. The commander of the Norwegian Armed Forces noted that Russia's position near his country's borders have not changed significantly over the past year and this allows Oslo to fulfill the requirements for strengthening defense capabilities agreed upon with NATO. So we can fulfill those plans and those decisions with content in the next years, but we need to speed up. We need to do it in two to three years to make sure that we are ready for whatever might happen, he stressed. The Norwegian parliament is set to approve a plan to nearly double defense spending over the next 12 years to adapt to threats from Russia. The focus will be on the capabilities of the military naval forces and air defense. Norway aims to achieve its NATO spending target of 2% of gross domestic product by 2024 with the level expected to reach 2.7% of GDP by 2030. A number of European NATO countries have been raising concerns about the risk of Russian aggression in the near future. For example, German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius said in January that the alliance should prepare for a Russian attack on a NATO country within five to eight years. Polish President Andrzej Duda is also concerned that Russia may soon have the military capability to attack NATO as early as 2026 to 2027. Czech air defense system Viktor MR2 in service in Ukraine, it showed effectiveness against drones. Recently, the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Rustem Umerov, and his German colleague Boris Pistorius visited the Ukrainian Armed Forces training ground, observing training on the use of the Viktor MR2 air defense system. This system has shown high effectiveness against UAVs used by Russia, including drones, Shahed, thanks to the ability to quickly deploy and move, noted the Ukrainian military. The Viktor MR2 is based on the ZPU-2, a Soviet-era double-barreled anti-aircraft gun based on the 14 5 times 114 mm KPV machine gun, which entered service with the USSR in 1949 and has since been adopted by more than 50 countries. There are several modifications of the system. The four-barrel version, ZPU-4, and the single-barrel, ZPU-1. The Victor MR2, manufactured by the Czech company Excalibur, is equipped with day and night sights. 300 rounds of ammunition are ready for firing, another 300 are placed in spare magazines mounted directly on the carriage. Additional ammunition can be carried in boxes in the vehicle's cabin along with spare barrels for quick replacement in case of overheating. Deliveries of Victor MR2 to Ukraine were organized by Czech volunteers who collected donations in the amount 
of 3,075 million euros, which was enough to purchase 15 systems. Showcased at the IDET 2023 Defense Exhibition, the system is mounted on a Toyota Land Cruiser 70, a vehicle commonly used to mount anti-aircraft guns, including heavy ones, because of its robust construction, off-road capabilities and reliability. Its durable chassis can handle the weight and recoil of heavy weaponry, making it a suitable platform for mobile air defense systems. The Land Cruiser's ability to traverse difficult terrains ensures it can be deployed quickly and effectively in various environments. Additionally, its global availability and ease of maintenance enhance its suitability for military use, providing a practical and cost-effective solution for mounting anti-aircraft guns like the Victor MR2.